Hey, Dito, do you know what time it is? 18. Is it time for us to do some Titan probing? In this episode, we talk about the Julia system. Will it reformat your mine hard drive? We introduce you to the oddballs of the C-Cubed Club and the Attack on Titan kill count. All that more coming up. And the show begins in three, two, one. It's time for the Kita Anime Podcast with Dito and KT Data. The Kita Anime Podcast is brought to you by the Salt Lake Comic Con. You better believe it. KT Data is going to be there. So keep an eye out on ktdata.net for Salt Lake Comic Con coverage. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Kita Anime Podcast. I am KT Data. I'm Dito. And this is the podcast, modcast, smogcast. Wait, no, I can't use that last one. Um... <laughs> about anime and we do it book club style where we watch a couple of episodes of anime we talk about it and you know we have some fun along the way and joining and me stuck as always, in things yep and joining me as always is dito how are you doing dito uh besides being rained on on the tarmac i'm doing good it's, it's raining outside right now it's kind of weird yeah. weather for uh september for early for well actually yeah early se- september end of august yeah usually it doesn't think- rain for a couple more weeks now, welcome to Utah, where wait five minutes and it changes, which literally happened today. Yep. Good times right there. All right. So if you guys have never seen the Kita Anime podcast before, and I'm wondering why you haven't, because the Kita Anime podcast is awesome, but this is the episode one of the summer season. Um, <laughs> what you can do that. is if you haven't seen any of these animes and just happen to stumble upon us, is head on over to ktdata.net. Look in the show notes. And there are links to watch all these animes. Go watch those animes. It's only three different shows. And then you can come back. Only. Listen, only. listen to what we say. I know we could like pick five shows and then make this like four hours long, but nobody wants that. <laughs> I know I wouldn't. Uh, I got I to spend enough time with him as it is. <laughs> we really hate each other, by the way, guys. If you didn't know. Um, yeah. yeah so, yeah, since, since we are that Dito... Let's just get this over with our first anime. The one thing that I hate more than Nito is the combination of this song and the opening sequence. <laughs> and our first anime is Ginga Kokotai Majestic Prince and it's brought to you by Kay's Cafe. Will cure all your ailments or will kill you. Take your risk today and hurt her feelings. <laughs> all right, so this is a returning anime series from our previous season. And last episode, Izuru maxes out on his AHSMB. The uh, team gets a trap, and we finally see a decent battle scene. Ooh. My surprise, guys. So, um, this is kind of interesting, though, Dito. Uh, we learned a little bit more about the Julia system and the HSMBs. You know, uh, last time they actually make you coffee. I want it's coffee. An all, it's a, it, yeah, it's a do-it-all AI system. Auto anyway, wipe too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> spray, spray right up there. Too. <laughs> hey, it's Japan. They like their toilets fancy. It's where it could also be turned into a water hole. <laughs> Um, but it turns out like the Julia system for the Julia system to actually work they take a little bit of your DNA which isn't that bad but it kind of gives us the Julia system a soul and uh, what the problem is is kind of the same thing with the zero system is if it fully awakens it can totally you know um, take what let's use an analogy that we all can relate to is uh, it's pretty much taking a magnet to a hard drive and then writing new data onto that hard drive or completely erasing it. Yep. Um, and then we kind of kind of see Zuru doing that when he's uh, bing. Yeah. So his personality it went from his like timid self to kind of that like playboy. Yo. Bing. <laughs> I wish yeah. I could do that in real life. Like, why can't I get a lens flare on my teeth in real life? Where, where because is JJ Abrams? Because you're not Michael Bay. 
<laughs> Give me J.J. Abrams and his lens flares. Uh, I hope he gets over that. Um, what's, Never. What's actually interesting is uh, our uh, nice uh, Lieutenant Commander Amane. She, get promo- she gets promoted, Dito. But not just once. Twice. In like two days, too. And she's captain now. And what's interesting is, what do you think she's the captain of? Uh, it's a f- so we went from uh, lieutenant commander to the captain of the recons team. That is also the same the team that she's in charge of is Doberman. Yes. Every time our I see favorite, our favorite, favorite upperclassman. Oh, I like <laughs> to call it the team, but you know, yeah, upperclassman works too mm-hmm. because. Why not actually have someone who's experienced and with the system and completely get saved by Team Rabbit? You nice. know, I, I have a feeling if we were in this anime, we'd end up being Team Doberman. Like, at the beginning, I'm like, hey, I could relate to the Fell Five. No, nope, we're pretty much like Team Doberman, where we just come out strong and then need to get helped every other episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we actually had people to kind of help us with this podcast is exactly the whole thing right there this anime podcast exactly. is majestic prince so if you guys want to intros. yeah if you want to be uh, yes definitely better intros if you want to be our team uh, rabbits let us know key.ktdata.net it's not working Dito <laughs> oh yeah the lens flare too it's like Michael Bay give me lens flare I'm really tempted. If I had more time before I had to leave out of town, I'm, I would still go back and add in lens flares every time. Better believe yeah, I would. That was a cheesy smile. Just realized. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And then so, you know, it's kind of more interesting where that, uh, you know, it's all on this war front right there. And you kind of think it's a united war front, but it's not really. It's all the nations are kind of, they're sort of helping each other but they're not sharing intel or anything and you know our age old thing comes back into play politics this is the kind of a funny part of the entire show because you never see this you don't you don't actually see the nitty gritty side of it you just figure like okay now all these nations are just trying to fight off one common enemy but no there's still that diversity in there because like our our tech you know the a it was asm AHSMBs are solely developed by a private co- uh, contractor. And from there, the military kind of picked them up and just uses them. Now, with, uh, with this uh, meeting, they're trying to buy the tech, which is very, very, very interesting when yeah. you think about it. And it's, it's, it's kind of interesting and it gives you a good commentary on war sometimes. Where, like, you watch Gundam, you watch um, some of these other animes, um, Robotech, and you see that they're all fighting under one united banner. In this case, in Majestic Prince, they're not. They're, you know, they're still, like, trying to go, oh, we are the, uh, what is it, the Russia, Russia, Parasia um, army, and then you have the United Chinese Front and all the, all these different, all these different factions on Earth, and they're not, like, really fighting together they're almost like trying to oust out each other you know one-upping each other in battle yeah. which seems like a waste in my it's opinion. almost like the space race but already in space yeah um and right now the uh, majestic prince the reason why they're kind of ahead is because of team rabbits and uh they're uh, a- as um seriously we're like 16 episodes in and i still can't get this acronym right um they're uh, ahsmbs on there um and it's it's kind of interesting um to see that and then we have some interpersonal relationship stuff going on in the background of these episodes who do you think he's gonna is is gonna get i bet you he's gonna get k um i think what's gonna happen is his personality is gonna get sucked up by the ass bimp i'm gonna start calling him (laughs) and he's gonna he's gonna he's we're gonna he's gonna go for the What's her bucket's brother? And there's gonna be BL over the place, and all the fangirls are gonna go crazy. Daniel. But what's gonna happen to uh, what's her name? The little girl. She's like in love with Mister Daniel. Mm. And uh, you have to say Daniel because Daniel because Izuru oh, was corrected oh. in the episode. It's Daniel. 
then in that case, there's going to probably be a lowly mixed in there somewhere. I don't know because I don't know exactly how, but there will be. Like, because I, I, I have a feeling it's going to have the Star Wars syndrome. So if you guys haven't seen the ending of Star Wars, pause this part of the podcast or just skip over it a little bit. Where, you know, the uh, awesome hero falls in love with the girl, which is Tiora, finds out that her brother and sister, and then ends up hooking up with Kay. That's anime for you. See, you can relate everything back to Star Wars. <laughs> so, <laughs> Practically, you can. Yeah. Um, and then now, which is more interesting that we find out, is the Wugaru or the Zentrani. They have discovered Earth's location. In the, I, th- I thought they knew where Earth was this whole entire time, but I guess they were just flying blind and just happened to come upon the Earth that's, things. Yeah, that, that's the same thing. It's like... Uh, when you when they mention that, I'm like, wait, what? It's I, like, aren't you the ones who kind of seeded the planets? So shouldn't you know where your seed went? That didn't sound the way. <laughs> that didn't to. sound good at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> but yeah, you know, does, like you think they would know where these planets are instead of just going out blindly? That 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 doesn't seem efficient. And these guys are supposed to be like these high and mighty aliens, but I guess not. I mean, even the Zentrani knew where to go. Hey, hey! Give them, give them some credit. They are the pre Zentrani you now. They got they, they learn from their mistakes. I think. Let's hope so. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see what happens now, and we'll see what Team Rapids happens. And I have a feeling the next couple episodes are going to be Asagi character growth episodes. Yeah, since he's so, he's so down the dumps. Yeah. He, feels, he feels so left behind, you know. But then again, that could also be his strength. Yeah. You never know. He Man. seems very capable. He seems very capable yeah. when it, he's pushed into the corner. Yeah. Who knows? We'll find out. All right. Let's go on to our next anime, which is a brand new anime, and actually features an expertise of Tito's. Oh no, that's not the right one. Oh no. <laughs> Fail number one in this episode. And our next anime, brand new one, is Stella Jokagun Koto CQ Boo. And it's brought to you by Michelle. Don't die on me, Michelle! No! <laughs> okay, so this is a brand new anime that is practically, for anyone who's, I, the best way I can relate to this is watching Chaos, but with airsoft guns. Which is where your specialty comes in. If you guys didn't know, Dito for a long time worked at an airsoft factory and owns many, many airsoft guns. More or less, uh, I go, I go skirmishing with a few friends yeah, around here, local, a local group. But and you also, you know, yeah, actively go shoot people. I actually do with exchange BBs. Plastic with BBs, guys. No, we call it exchanging plastic. Katie. We okay. exchange plastic, not like that. Anyways, so here we are. We'll first introduce our main heroine is uh, Yamamoto Yura. Probably saying that too phonetically, but she is a freshman at the Stella Academy. Academy and for girls, by the way. No boys! Ca- yeah. No yeah. boys! Academy for girls, because it took me all the two seasons to find out that the end of K-On was an all-girls school. <laughs> <laughs> I am really? not joking. Yes. Really? It took me that long to figure that out. Oh, wow. Well, at least we, 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 we took care of that. It's in the title. <laughs> Yes, it is. Thank God. <laughs> or I'd be sitting there going like, why is it no boy? Oh! Oh! I can't believe it took They, they made this title out. specifically for you, Dito, because they knew that you were so confused. Yeah, they, they, they listened to me. They listened to me. So, she started out in the new school so that she can feel, feel, what, how do they put it? So she feels like, She's a belong. freshman, you know? She's yeah, brand new, start. excited, yeah. new school. Like, a lot of people right now, they're feeling that because, school, you know, school is just barely starting. College gets started yesterday. Yeah, high school's already in there. College is getting started. And everyone needs a fresh start. That's where she comes in. But at the same time, why not fresh start with D3? A club that is majorly made up of weirdos. Like we us. fit in. Yeah. <laughs> But it's the, Except the we're not girls. Yeah, thank, 
I, I'll get into it a bit later. <laughs> so, it, the lineup starts as uh, Retino, which lure, it loves to lure in with cake, apparently. The cake is a lie! <laughs> uh, was it uh, Yachiyo, which is kind of the oddball that loves that's the sniper of the group, so to speak. Yeah. No, not like that. Mm-hmm. And Hanukkah, kind of the tactician, you know, the ones that will give you hand signals and tell you where to go. It's just like, you know, visuals here, over there, stuff like that. And then there's uh, Kara, which I, I just call her the Rambo because she's kind of, she's like the foreigner that comes in there and just jumps off walls and shoots people. So this is where it gets kind of fun because in Airsofting, they go through a game called Rambo and it... it this can be uh, played different different way scenarios, but you would generally get a machine gun. In this case, they use an M60, which so, is so. Dito, explain to people what an M60 is and what what stands out about it from other people. Okay, an M60 is referred to as a saw, which you know is a high capacity gun that weighs a lot that is meant to lay down cover fire. That's what most people who know of a saw is generally meant for. In this case. Rambo, from the movie Rambo. Where oh, really? He goes around, where he, yeah, I believe that or not. <laughs> where he goes around just like blasting people with his machine gun. They do the same scenario, but the only difference is, is that instead of everyone who's firing back, you only the receiving team of Rambo, that they call them the deputies, only use handguns. Mm-hmm. Which, oh, yeah. And, you know, before we kind of go on, can you kind of explain what happens when you actually like how how you're considered out in any of these games and whatnot? Um, most airsoft games are what was called the honor system. You know, if you don't play with any marker BBs or anything, it's called the honor system. If you feel your hit, you call out and hold your gun in the air itself, or people are just going to shoot at you because not everyone can hear you, whether they're under a rock, literally, or so, too far away from hearing. Yeah, so, and it's you know, usually it, it's usually like hit. Hit, right? Yeah. Or something like that? No, it's like you say like hit out and you hold a gun over your head. Okay. It's just it's just to signify or you hold it straight up and everything or hold a flag or whatever. In this case, they just they just say uh, hit though. Hito. Because, it's, because it's Japanese. Yep. Um the game basically goes if you if you shoot Rambo, the deputies win. If Rambo shoots you and shoots all the deputies, Rambo wins. And when I see their their actual play field, I'm very very jealous because I want to play in CQB, which is close quarter close quarter combat. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's a lot of like terrain and everywhere, jumping across hills, jumping onto rivers, you know, streams, and then busting over rocks and everything, the stuff like that. Where I play in a desert, literally yeah. rolling hill deserts, and occasionally get to play at a an abandoned mine every so often. Ooh, that's. Like so, and it it sounds like it's pretty fun. And then so kind of, so it usually you got one Rambo, right? And then you got however many types of people who are deputies, right? And yeah. Well, here's the thing about the whole game about when you look into how they're playing the game versus how it would normally be played is that because this is an actual game type, right? Yeah. That, this is actually like, this is this is one of many different game types, of variants of the same thing. You know, it's just not called Rambo, but. Here's the fun. Here's the fun part about the whole game is that um, you don't necessarily have to use your gun. You also have a knife, of course, not a real knife, but a rubber knife. Yeah, in some don't cases. Get or, or if you want to, you can even use an object. You know, we've used shoes. You know, we had someone hit us with a shoe and said you're out. You know, any object you can consider a weapon can be used to, you know, as a weapon. <laughs> in this case. What was it? A candy, like a uh, snack I, treat? I, it, yeah, it was. Um, it was. It, it was, was a yaoi stick. Yeah, it was a yaoi stick. Like that's what I thought when I saw it. I'm like that's a yaoi stick. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> her knife is a yaoi stick in this case. For all those who remember us talking about yaoi sticks, um, if you are hit with, if you are used, if it's used on you, sorry, you are out. It's a knife kill. Just, but, just like in the movie Rambo, because that's what he does, right? You know, knife kills. It's knife kills e- either you get blasted away, like from long distance or it's a uh, it's it's sylvester stallone right I yeah right? yeah as fast as but I, I just i noticed this when i rewatched the anime just for the podcast 
that she's using like double A batteries in the saw. I'm going like that thing must not be firing very very hard because if you get pepper sprayed like that with a saw that close, you are gonna feel it. Yeah. I mean, so you want you want to kind of explain the different types like what the double A batteries does and the d- other different types of propulsion really. Okay, so for anyone who's watching this that actually knows about airsoft is that they don't run off of double A's. You know, you don't just put in double A batteries. You use like lithium ion batteries. Generally, that's about either between a six, uh, an eight point six volt up to eleven point one or higher, depending on what kind of battery. You know, mostly they use uh, lithium ion, or you can just go with normal nickel batteries. But generally, they're all re- rechargeables, depending on what kind of gun you get. In this case, I kind of feel that they're using cheaper guns, but that's not all guns. The pistols are using either some kind of green gas, propane, or red gas. What's the red gas? It's just a higher, just a higher condensation of the green gas. Oh, okay. You know, it's it basically if you want that, just use propane. Yeah. Most gu- most guns will, but you're gonna have to use silicone oil in it so it doesn't dry up the seals. Mm-hmm. Do they use uh, CO two kind of like? In paintball guns too, or mm-hmm. not? Yeah, you can you can modify guns to use CO two, but in this case, it looks like they don't even want to use it, and I don't even know what they even use for their pistols. But there's in this also we see another scenario too, which is called VIP. This is more traditional because what's better than having to escort somebody? You know, if they die, you lose. You know, if you take out the opposing forces. You win. So you can be like the guy in uh, The Guardian and protect Whitney Houston? I let Whitney Houston be shot. I mean, <laughs> no, <joking guy. laughs> don't hate me. Hate mail can be sent to KTDana.net. No, but in this case, I want to play in an abandoned school. Yeah, Have you noticed this club has like the most like terrain you see all these animes and usually they're like we can't even get a club room and they have like an abandoned school and like a forest and everything i'm like whoa i know i, I kind of want to know more about the school like for a club that doesn't really seem to get members because they're weirdos and it's apparently really weird for women to like airsoft or girls like airsoft and i still have yet to meet many girls who like airsoft i've only met like a handful and they're all from airsofting buddies of mine <laughs> Yeah, and so it's kind of it's kind of interesting. I'm 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 really interested to see how uh, they're going to introduce all these different airsoft ideas in because um, uh, Yura, she's this is the fir- her first exposure to airsoft, and they're kind of teaching her as they go, which is kind of cool. I find it more interesting because, like, for someone who's played a lot of airsoft. I'm mostly looking at him just going like, I want to play on that terrain. <laughs> but then I'm also looking at the physics behind it. I'm just going, there's no way. Like, in most cases, if you have colored BBs, it signifies you're using 12 gram BBs, which suck. Especially in anything electric. Oh, come on, Dito. It's anime <laughs> physics. It exactly. all works out. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, anime physics versus... Because, like, my mind's so jumbled up watching, like... First, anime physics to what I'm actually used to playing. I'm just like, going, get out of my head. Yeah. Just let me enjoy this. I, th- I think it'll be fun. So you guys are, some people are at home like, you didn't talk anything about the anime. Tough luck. <laughs> <laughs> I like believe, I, it not, believe it or not, everything I was talking about actually relates to anime. Yeah. It's just a, bit, a little bit more explaining for the people because. I like how learning. Many, how, how many of, how many otakus actually play Airsoft? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I don't know too much about Airsoft other than P90 and that's awesome. But other than that, I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, but speaking of anime physics, Dito, here's one that definitely uses anime physics. Yeah, anime physics. And another anime that's returning from the previous season, the Kita Anime Podcast, is Attack on Titan or Shingeki no Kyojin. And it's brought to you by Titan Operation. Prick, prod, and poke the secrets out of your titans. Raw. Random raw. 
Yeah. All right. So last episode, man, finally, finally, after a half season, gets their first victory. Aaron gets his first uh, imprisonment, and Levi gets a new pet. Yeah, watch out for that first soap drop. Ooh. All right. So what's kind of interesting now is that finally, Aaron, we've got, kind of gotten through this entire setup phase for all the characters, and Aaron is finally in the Recon Corps. And of course, when you get introduced to a whole new thing, you got to introduce new characters. So, what's interesting is they decided to do a Titan Kill Count. Wish I had wish we, I wish I wish we could have like an ending. We're just like ching 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 ching. Yeah. Um, so, Dito, would you like to count off the Titan Kill Count? Do I have to? Okay, fine. I know numbers are tough, but what's a number? The thing that's all look like letters. But they're anyways. Okay. <laughs> so we have first off is uh, Peter of Rao with a kill count of ten titans. Oh. Um, and then we have Oreo Bossad, and he's killed thirty nine titans. Dun dun dun. Ooh, elitist. And then Ellen Gin with a kill count of 14. And then we have Gunther Schultz, and he's killed seven. Seven. You know, like, it sounds like, like once you hear all these guys, it sounds it doesn't sound so impressive with seven kills and stuff. But let's keep in mind, most of this army that's in Attack on Titan, they can't even kill one. I also look at it this way too. Is that these are like the elitists? These are like the best of the best of this of Levi's group. And you see seven kills, and you're just sitting there going like, "That's not right." But then you think about like how many Titans actually were killed that Misaka didn't kill. Yeah. What um. Yeah, that's what I'm interested in. Is what me uh, Mikasa's uh, um, kill count is right at now. Maybe you should go back and check. It, no, I'm too lazy. That's a lot. I think she's at <laughs> she's at least in the double digits. If you guys know, no, email no, she, us, email at, us at, at ktdata.net. She's in in the uh, four digits a lot. <laughs> See, <gasps> numbers are letters. Uh, <laughs> so, um, of course, Aaron's finally there, and we start seeing a little bit of uh, the inside of uh, Captain Levy's team, and it's pretty much just like the C three club. They're all oddballs. Yep on there um and then we have major hanji which is she's she's almost like the chief scientist right now but she's willing to get up close and personal with the titans is pretty much the biggest oddball just because they captured two titans in the last episode where she gave them the names of savvy or savini uh wasn't it swarmy no, Wait, it's a, sonny 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 and bean um, <laughs> gonna make sure you why. didn't mispronounce that one, Nito. I'm just looking. I'm going like Bean, Bean, and of course, her justification of these two names were because of the two people who were in history known to have fed on human flesh, and a total of like 500 people in 25 years. That's why she named him that. I was expecting. But, I was expecting Bean to like ride in a little car and have a little teddy bear and go. Arr. If you know what I mean. I bet you most people don't even know that reference. No. Sad. Sad generation we live in. Ah. Uh, but, but anyways, her Haji is more of the, or Hanji is more of the kind of the Titan inspector, I guess you can call it. She like tries to figure out the different, like the Titan's strong points. She wants, yeah, she wants to know how they tick. Yeah, like she would stab him in the chest with a spear and everything, and they're just sitting there just going like... And she, but she really, really loves her job. Or is very... Or a sadist. One uh, well, no, it's know. good for her. It's, it's, it's important to love your job. Right? True. Yeah. True. You know, it, she loves telling stories, but I think she's a little long-winded. Especially if you looked at Aaron. He was a... Uh, in tip-top shape after a overnight cram session of everything. Oh yeah, he was completely exasperated. That's like us at day four of CES. <laughs> but that was also because of somebody drinking the prior night, 
No. Never, never. Um, and then so. And, and then there was the kimchi. <laughs> Oh, uh, and then so finally, this is so this is what got me in one of the episodes of Attack on Titan, is that we're well over halfway through the season, and they finally get the crew together. Like I, I was literally to the point where I'm like, okay, so not all the cadets are gonna meet each other when they're out in the real world. Nope, they do meet each other out in the real world in the Recon Corp. And I'm like, it took 16 episodes for this to happen. Uh... I don't know how I feel about that. Um, and now they're going to go on their, what is it, 54th or 56th? It's 50-something expedition of the Recon Corp. And supposedly 30% of people going out are going to die. And like that's literally what um, the commander was telling the, the uh, cadets. While when they were trying to decide what uh, faction they show up to, and I, I love it because at the beginning of it, it, there's not even that many people lined up and ready to join, and then at the end of them, there's maybe like twenty handful. at most, you know, on and, there. And most of handful? them, yeah, most of them was uh, Aaron's crew too. On there. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. So you know, but. Here's a little. Here's a little tidbit. I just kind of realized too. Whenever they start introducing a lot of characters, you know, and they give it kind of a character development with them too they end up dying like marco yeah they're trying they're pretty much doing the game of thrones thing you know i'm, I'm curious if george R. R. martin helped write the script because you know that's what happens <laughs> is you like these characters you think that's going to happen and then he axes them and if you guys don't know why just go watch game of thrones it happens all the time all the time all the time that's why i never want to be a character in his books because i know i'm gonna die um so they're going out beyond the wall and Dito, what do you think the purpose of this expedition is? Like, I'll give you one guess what the next few episodes are going to be about. Next few episodes is going to be them talking about getting to the basement of Aaron's father's house to find his porn stash. I mean, <laughs> secrets of Titans. Well, yeah, and I bet you these next couple episodes, it's just going to be about Aaron trying to figure out how to uh, control his Titan transforming powers. And then I bet you a couple people are going to die along the way and all that good stuff right there. But this comes uh, kind of a strategy aspect I wanted to talk about too is that Aaron's team is kind of placed near the back. Like it's actually more safe. It's more safe there than even the supply carts. And this is all for Aaron to gain experience in battle. It's going to level up. Do, 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 do. No? I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how I feel about this, Dito. Like, seriously, this anime, you're starting to feel it too, where it's like, are you really dragging this out? Because you're dragging this out a lot, and it's starting to bug yeah. me. I'm more looking at the fact that it's so unique, so different, that doesn't follow the, any animes we've seen up to this point, kind of like Sword Art Online, which it was just a whole yeah, fresh Yeah, but look. you know what happened what? to the second half of Sword Art? Yeah, it, it completely tanked. Yeah. Uh, I'm really hoping it's not trying to do the Naruto route where we're going to have like 500 episodes four years later. No, I don't think they could really do that. And it would get too... I didn't think they could do that for Naruto or Bleach and look at where we are. Yeah, but Naruto and Bleach more had a a general storyline. This one is like, what what are they going to do for the next 500 episodes? There's a lot of Titans out there and it's a big... Those walls are big. Remember we saw how big they were? You can only do so much. I mean, the, the walls are only so big. They they then, they, they can pull like a, the Dragon Ball Z where it takes like four episodes just to chop off an arm of a Titan. Oh God! I think don't about say it. That. Don't, think no, about it. No. Think no, about it. No. Like hey, everyone, everyone, just Kita KTData.net. Tell KT he's an he's an idiot. No, it's like think about it. It's gonna be like. Is this clip gonna hit that wall so I can swing over or not? And then. Another episode of him like midair contemplating why he joined the recon corpse in the first place, what he's fighting we're gonna, for, and we're like we're gonna get we're gonna get half a filler episode every episode. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're you know, and then magically they're gonna go try and revive people by collecting these mythical dragon balls where the first one is in the basement of No, 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 no. It's gonna be Titan Balls. Uh, uh okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, I had to go that route. 
I'm like, I really hope they don't do that. And, you know, because it's a good anime. It hasn't shown signs of Sword Art Online yet. But who knows? I didn't expect that from Sword Art Online. Yeah, that's what we get for these kind of out of the blue new take on anime, which is a nice fresh breath of, you know, nice fresh breath. But at the same time, too, the way that this show's going, it feels like the show is going this direction and the fandom is building it up too far. Yeah. But, you know, guess what? That's all we got to talk about this time around for episode one of the summer season of the Kita Anime Podcast. That's good times right there. So if you yeah. guys agree or disagree with anything that Dito and I said, send us some it's feedback. Kita at ktdata.net. We just like having discussions. Or you can just leave us some feedback at k- facebook.com slash ktdata.net or on Twitter at ktdata or on Google Plus as Kita Anime Podcast. We're there. We're paying attention to all of that. Of course, mm-hmm. you can always watch us live. It's always fun to watch us live because there's all these crazy shenanigans going on. Um, you can find that at ktdata.net slash live. Or just head on to over to ktdata.net in general. I mean, Dito, you got any goodies coming up? You know, we got we have Comic Con that's coming up for sure. Yeah, we're we're going to so, have Comic Con up in next on from the 5th to the 7th of September. And then there is probably nothing all of that spectacular going on. Um I am currently now just getting out and doing some more photography. So watch yeah. for some more, watch for my photos, bombs going in, literally. And I just realized I got to go pick up Asuna from you. Oh, yeah. It's sitting right here. Oh, man. Me and my bad it, memory. Yeah. Your Asuna is uh, saying, why haven't you get, Why haven't you come for me, KT? Kirito, save me. Yeah. Or something like that. You don't have health either, or something. <laughs> we need we need the seed. <laughs> we, we... <laughs> oh boy! Um, but if you want to watch live, make sure you guys come. Uh, September tenth, twenty thirteen is our next live episode. Um, anything else, Dito? No, just uh, when you come to us next time, be prepared to hear our our ranting about Comic Con. Yep. So Salt Lake's first Comic Con. It's gonna be exciting. William Shatner's gonna be there. But thank you guys Shatner! watching in the uh, chat room, talking there. All you guys listening at home, you guys are all awesome too. I appreciate it. And Dito, thank you for dealing with me every two weeks. Thank you. For, thank you for letting me deal with you. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs> And that was recorded. Yes. <laughs> hey, Dito. Do you know what time it is? Is it time for some Titan probing? Ooh. In this episode, we talk about the Julia system. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Ah, I, that wasn't what I wrote there. That was what I replaced the other stuff.